I've been stuck at home for a week after the coronavirus outbreak has halted the world, so I decided to watch Contagion. The 2011 film written by Scott Z. Burns and directed by Steven Sonnenberg depicts a worldwide outbreak of a deadly virus. Sound familiar? So I decided to compare everything these guys got right and everything they got wrong. This is Contagion vs. Reality, March 2020. And of course, spoilers ahead. It's quite remarkable to see a film almost a decade old so accurately depict the reality of possibly the largest pandemic we have seen this century. Europe is now the epicenter of the global ban began preventing entry for those traveling from 26 I'll refer European to three countries. points specifically. Disease origin, transmission speed, and the impact of misinformation. Probably the most shocking match with reality is that the fictitious MEV1 disease depicted in the movie originates from animals, from bats to pigs to humans. The information that we have today about SARS-CoV-2 tells us that it also has an animal origin, a bat to a pangolin to finally reach humans. It is believed that the disease made its way from a bat to a pangolin in a wet market, specifically this market in Wuhan where wildlife is traded. The conditions of the market where animals are stacked on top of each other likely created a similar deadly coincidence. Now, while only a small portion of the Chinese population consumes wildlife animals, the highly contagious nature of this virus allowed it to quickly spread from patient zero into the city of Wuhan. Which brings me to the next point, transmission speed. The reproduction number is used to estimate and represent how quickly a disease can spread. How many other people are they likely to infect? Now, before we had a vaccine, polio spread at a rate between four and six. We call that number the r naught. Like COVID-19, the fictitious virus is respiratory and can live in surfaces, fomites, for several hours or even days, making it Joy, all that anything. easy to transmit. The average person touches their face two or three thousand times a day. Two or three thousand times a day? Three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, elevator buttons, and each other. Those things become fomites. In the film, Patient Zero contracts the virus in Hong Kong, which is technically another match, and imports it to the US. We see little of the development of the pandemic in other countries outside the US, but it does spread extremely fast in America. While MEV1 and COVID-19 share a similar r naught factor, in the film, 125 plus million people are infected about a month after patient zero. Patient zero for the US showed up in January 19th, about two months before I shot this video. The first case of the deadly Chinese coronavirus making its way to the so that US. that patient is a man in his 30s. He is in the hospital here. And there's not just me. one reason why the US has been so slow to test. And while testing hasn't been the most efficient in the country, the official estimate today is around 1,500 infected. In the film, response from health authorities and the government was prompt, with quarantine zone established as soon as 14 days after the first death. However, it's the impact and dynamics of misinformation and mass hysteria where we can find eerie similarities with our 2020 reality. Distrust in the government and fake news. In the movie, they're represented by Jude Law's characters, a blogger that, while credited with noticing the epidemic early on, begins disseminating false theories with no other seeming purpose than generating traffic for his website and chaos. When I turned on my computer this morning, I had over two million unique visitors all looking for the truth. Alan fakes contracting the virus and fakes getting better using a natural extract called forsythia. Forsythia is a real herb used to treat bronchitis and believed to help reduce inflammation, but even today, without sufficient evidence to be used in medicine. Alan's claims release chaos, and misinformed masses begin to try to get their hands on the extract. 
And now to the growing number of hoaxes popping up online from false claims about Similarly, treatment. Similarly, a group of conspiracy theorists, including Alex Jones, have begun promoting microparticle colloidal silver. Tested it, it works on just about everything. That beats coronavirus. They have clinical documentation to prove it. Order silver now. A cease and desist was issued by the New York Attorney General, but we are yet to find out if it does anything to stop them. We are, of course, also seeing shortages of masks, which have been advised against for the general population by the World Health Organization. Hand sanitizer and toilet paper, for some reason. I just want one pack. When a vaccine is developed in the film, incorrectly just at 133 days after patient zero, Jude Law's character threatens to continue misinforming his followers about the potential side effects of the vaccine including autism. The lawyers indemnified the drug companies. Maybe it causes autism or narcolepsy or cancer 10 years from now. Who knows? Just the other day, two years old, two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. The film also taunts at misinformed government well, officials. Well, Homeland Security wants to know if we could put a vaccination in the water supply, like fluoride, cure everyone all at once. Which is just icing on the cake after seeing this go down in our real world White House. Well, you take a, a solid flu vaccine, you don't think that would have an impact or much of an impact on corona? No. Probably none. Uh, probably none. So, so. As for what comes next, the film predicts a suspension in basic services, food shortages, and mass graves. Let's hope that we don't get to see any of that. Using this opportunity to remind everybody that washing your hands with soap is the best route. Soap is the best agent to break down the protein and lipid walls of the virus. Panic doesn't help anybody, but sadly, it seems they also got this right.